I'll start by mentioning that in, in Israel, 20% of the citizens are Arab-Palestinian citizens of Israel. There are 7.5 million citizens, out, out of which 1.5 are uh, the Arab-Palestinian uh, citizens. This is the size of, size of the Arab minority. And Sikuri, uh, we are a binational organization. We work Jewish and Arab together. Our vision is to achieve equality between the Jewish and Arab citizens of the state of Israel. And so, and we, we work to achieve equality based on, on, on moral values, based on democratic values, based on interest. We also believe that this is the very interest of the both groups. <coughs> with, uh, there are severe disagreements between Jews and Arabs about so many issues, but we believe that the very interest of all the citizens is to have equality uh, in the state between the old citizens. So far, Sikui dealt mainly with uh, the tangible resource. Tangible resource of, of course, the budget, the budget that the state allocates, uh, the welfare budget, the infrastructure budget, uh, the health budget, the education budget. Land is also a very uh, significant uh, tangible uh, resource. And the, the, the tangible the resources in Israel are not being allocated on an equal basis. And in, since Sikui was established more than 20 years ago, we put uh, most of our efforts in the issue of uh, uh, initiating a process of uh, reaching to equality in the allocation of uh, tangible resources. We developed the Equality Index. We developed the uh, From Barriers to Opportunity, which is another model we developed. You can also see the uh, copies of this model in which we took different policy fields and we analyzed very, uh, very deeply the reason for unequal allocation. And we created a process in which we work with the Israeli government on the one end and with the local Arab municipalities on the second end. And we, we, we create like bridges of, of working, of working relation between the government on the one end and the, and the local Arab municipalities yes. in order to, uh, to achieve equal allocation of resources. And we saw success. There were, uh, there were uh, policy fields in which Sikui put efforts uh, for many years. And we saw that more budget is going to the Arab communities. We are still far from equal allocation. But uh, we, we are really very proud that we developed uh, uh, effective models that were really uh, uh, were able to, to understand the reasons that the policy is not equal, and we were really able to affect policies, which was uh, and, and it really uh, and the issue in which we dealt and with other partners, and some of our partners are uh, uh, also organizations which are being supported by the new, Israel, the new Israel Fund. It's important to say that Siku is not the only organization in Israel that push for equality between Jews and Arabs. There are, uh, there are at least 10 out of them, at least five uh, significant and effective organizations. I'm quite sure that all of them are supported by the New Israel Fund that push, uh, that push for equality between Jews and Arabs. But, but we do uh, understand now that equality in tangible resource is not enough. If, we want, if you want to create a shared and equal society, uh, equal allocation of budget is not enough. You can, uh, th because there is another... Uh, um, Maybe I would say before that when I'm speaking about shared society or when I dream about shared society, I think that shared society is a society, at least in the Israeli context, in which there are two groups, Jews and Arabs, shared society is a society in which each group sees itself as a stakeholder of the state, but does not see itself as the only stakeholder. And this is not the case in Israel, because Jews, we see ourselves as the stakeholders of the state of Israel, but generally speaking, we do not see the Arabs a stakeholder of, of the state of Israel. Even many Jews that support equality, they support equality, say, okay, you know, we have the Arab citizens, we have no other option, so we'll have, let's have good infrastructure in the communities. But it's not coming from the, from the sense of, you know, they are also the stakeholder of our state. And if you look at the Arab society, so speaking generally, they, they do not see themselves as stakeholders because they, they feel the exclusion of them from the, from the state resources and from the state society. So Israel currently, in 2012, is far from being shared society. And I believe that in order to, to reach to a point in which Israel will be, a there will be a shared society in Israel, we must also deal with the intangible assets. The in intangible assets are those resources that usually you cannot count by shekels or, 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 by do or by dollars. It's the question of what are the holidays of the country. Right now, if you live in the university and there is a Muslim holiday, there, there are exams. In Haifa University, I think 30, 40% are, or 30 are Arab students. In the major Arab holidays, there are exams. Uh, uh, if you, of course, if you think about the symbols of the state, this is something which is very significant. If you, speak, if you think about the language, if you think about the names, the name, for, the name of the mountains, the name of the streets, today when you go to Arab neighborhoods in mixed cities, 
Uh, most of the names of the street will be very Zionist Hebrew names. Rehov David Ben Gurion, Rehov Chaim Herzog, in an Arab neighborhood, in a mixed cities. So it's not something that you can buy dollar because it doesn't matter financially if you if you uh, if your street is about named Ibn Rushdi or Ben Gurion. But for, but for your uh, feeling of, be- of belonging, it does make sense. If what is the name of the streets and the environment in which we live? So. Um, we, we really believe that equality in tangible assets, which is by itself a long process, or even process for generation, is not enough for create shared society. Uh, shared society, and in order to reach a, to shared society, we should also touch the very sensitive issue of intangible assets. Mm-hmm. Now, the bad news is that the Israeli society is not ready uh, even to start thinking about agreement between Jews and Arabs about the very big question. The identity of the state, is it a Jewish state or a Jewish democratic or state of all its citizens? I'm not even speaking about the law of return and right of return. And, and th- those big questions, the Israeli society is very, is very far from being uh, able to reach agreement b- between Jews and Arabs. I will tell you furthermore, even us in the shared NGOs in which we work uh, together, Jews and Arabs, we are far from reaching such agreement. We have very, very different opinion in our NGOs, Jews and Arabs in Israel are very different in, uh, on the ideas about the symbols of the state, the flag. Currently, the flag is also there is the Magen David, which is a very Jewish symbol. And, and the, the Jewish majority, 99.9199, doesn't even want to think about you know, sharing the flag because you know, it is a Jewish state. So things are complicated. And, um, but the good news is that there are some aspects of collective and national rights in which we believe that there is possibility to go, uh, to go forward. And, uh, and uh, we, are, we, we believe that bilinguali- bilingualism I- is one of them. Because the, uh, if you speak with Jews about changing the flag, uh, well, they, will, they will throw you from the window. But if you speak about you know, having Arabic in hospital, this, sounds, this doesn't sound so bad. <laughs> or having Arabic in the public transportation, or having Arabic in the uh, Arabic performance in, in festival, or having an exhibition of Arabic artists in museum. So uh, 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 we really we believe, and we already started in our project of shared public space, that even in the current political atmosphere, that politically is one of the worst political atmosphere regards the Arab citizens, <coughs> because of the strengthening of our Victor Lieberman and the power that Victor Lieberman got and his anti-Arab campaign. But even in the current political atmosphere, uh, uh, there, there is not high rejection to steps which are related to Arabic language. In Arabic la- le- 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 uh, and Arabic culture, I'm sorry, and presence of Arabic symbols in the public space. Not in the national official symbols, but uh, uh, when we come to a festival in Haifa, and we tell them, you know, in the next festival in Hanukkah, you should also have Arab uh, 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 shows for kids. I mean, no one is crazy about it. I mean, no one is very against it, and people are supportive, and, and they work with, with us for introducing uh, those things, and, and for sure about Arabic in the service institution. In hospitals, I mean, we didn't even hear once that someone should tell us, you know, this should be the case, that there should not be Arabic in hospitals. Nevertheless, still in many hospitals in Israel, you'll find Hebrew and Arabic, I'm sorry, Hebrew and English only, but there is process, or at least there is agreement to go with our direction of introducing the, Arab, the Arabic. Um, yeah. So I, I think that while we really should have uh, a dream of achieving uh, a real agreement between Jews and Arabs about all the big questions, I think social change is about, on the one hand, of, uh, of putting the dream on the table, but on the second, to find very uh, pragra- pragmatic ways to move in the current political atmosphere, or in the current political, uh, uh, or, or in the current, I would say, non-idealistic reality. And this is exactly where Sikui is. We, we, we cannot change all the world, despite the fact that we won't. And in the current uh, political atmosphere, we, we move forward. I, I, will, I will end by mentioning that all this idea of, of shared public space is actually actually related to the concept uh, of what I call shared homeland, which is a concept which I think we should promote in Israel, a concept in which the both groups will, che- will see Israel, yeah. or, or whatever they call it, Israel or Palestine, or the state of Israel as a shared homeland of Jews and Arabs. Uh, it, is, it is very, very challenging. It is very challenging for both groups. It is, of course, very challenging for the Arabs who have been living in Israel or in Palestine for many, many generations before the Jews came in the beginning from Europe and then from the Islamic, uh, Islamic, Islamic movement. I want to say Islamic countries. 
So, I mean, the Arabs were the only one that lived in Israel for many generations, and then the Jews come, and then now we expect the Arabs uh, to accept the idea of a shared homeland, which is, of course, very difficult, but it's also difficult for the Jews, because the, the Zionist dream was about establishment of a Jewish state in, uh, in Eretz Israel, in Palestine, a Jewish state for the Jews, and now, uh, now we, we should understand, or I propose that Jews should understand, that this homeland is not only the homeland of the Jews, but it is a shared homeland of Jews and Arabs, and, uh, and unfortunately, many, many people on both sides, many people on, on, on both sides, do not accept the notion of, of, uh, of shared homeland. Even many Jews that support equality, it is very important for me to say, Jews that support equality and, uh, and work for equality, infrastructure and education and, and budget, the concept of shared homeland is very difficult. And the Arab side, m- many Arabs that do want to create normal relations with the Jews and to find ways to, to live with the Jews on a peaceful and equal basis, the, the notion of shared homeland is, is very difficult. And I think that it's critical for Israel, as Jews and Arabs, to move to the direction of, of accepting. It's something very uh, uh, rigshi. Emotional. Emotional. <laughs> the, the issue of oh, shared homeland <laughs> is very emotional. I think that Jews and Arabs should, should move this emotional process to, to believe in shared homeland. And I believe that the, the, the whole concept of, of bilingualism can take us, take us there. Because if Arabic and Hebrew are being... Uh, uh, presence in the public space, and if Jews and Arabs who take the train will hear, keeps on hearing Arabic and Hebrew, I think this is the, the beginning of emotional process of digesting the fact that this is a shared homeland, and that's why we, are so, uh, we put so much effort in taking this uh, direction forward. Thanks. Thank you.